Hey guys, today's merch drop is my Mimic Enamel pins. Uh, the Mimic Art Supply pins that I did a Kickstarter for last year are now available on my shop. Uh, you can grab any of those designs. I have both the A and the discounted B grades. For those of you who don't know, B grade basically means it has a small error on it, but it's not a huge, like, terrible thing, but I just didn't feel right charging full price. So if you guys would like to grab some of the Mimic Enamel pens, go to my shop or my Etsy and grab them while they're still available. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are doing another Monster Mash. So today we're gonna be doing a food chain Monster Mash, which I really enjoyed. I did a couple, I think I've done maybe two or three now, but basically how it works is we're going to choose a food chain and draw each aspect of that food chain combined into one creature. So for example, a previous one was like the certain type of grass in the tundra was eaten by like these oxen, which then was the ox were eaten by these, you know, like you, you add each aspect going up the food chain um, and combine them all into one creature. So right now I am live on Twitch and I'm gonna be asking my Twitch community which biome we want to pick our monster bash from because there's so many different like places we can pick these food chains from. There's like the ocean, all the different types of forest, the desert, lots of really fun options. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask my Twitch stream, we're gonna do a straw poll and figure out which one we're gonna do today. And then we'll uh, figure out which food chain we're gonna make. All right, everyone. So the Twitch chat has given me a couple of suggestions and they have voted on which one we're gonna pick our food chain from. So the options we had were the deep sea, the black forest in Germany, uh, the Delta in the Netherlands, and the Alpine Forest. So let's see what they picked. And they picked the Black Forest in Germany. Interesting. I have never heard of this place. So I'm really excited to just kind of look into what's there and maybe we can break down a food chain. I don't know if I can Google like Black Forest food chain, but we'll see. We'll have to Google and see what we find. Oh, hey, we kind of have one right here. Well, a lot of Black Forest cakes in case you were wondering about <laughs> what the Black Forest food chain really is. It's all cakes. Uh, but no, for this one, it looks like we have this kind of breakdown right here. So let me bring this over into Photoshop. Okay, so here is the one that I was able to find online. So we have uh, four potential opportunities for a plant for this to start with. And then from there, we'll see um, which herbivore will come next. And then we'll get a carnivore and potentially like we might just do all four tiers, because there's not much past Fox and Falcon. You know, we're gonna have a black bear, like no matter what, but I think we have a lot of variety that we could potentially get. So let me get a dice roller and let's see what we get today. Okay, so we got the D4 here. Let's see if we get the red poppy, the white pine, the Norway spruce, or the Magolichin, Magol Magolchin, I, ugh, flowers. All right, let's go ahead and roll. We got a four, okay. So we got the red poppy. So we'll start here. And then the red poppy leaves it open only to go to this Western Capicale, which then leads to the falcon, which then leads to the black bear. So those are the four we're going to get. It, man, it would have been really fun if it went down the middle somewhere and we had to figure that out. But these are the four we have. We have two birds, a bear, and a red poppy. This is gonna be really interesting. I'm gonna have to do a couple sketches to try to figure out how we're gonna convert all these into a creature, but I think it could look really cool, especially with like the feathers on this one, like all the coloring and the spots and such. And then the speckles on the falcon are pretty cool too. We could incorporate with that with like the poppy maybe somehow, but let's jump in, do a couple sketches and figure out where we can go with this.
Okay, so we are all done doing the concept sketches for our combo of this one. And I'm really digging this first one right here. It kind of reminds me of like a griffin design, but instead of like a lion or some type of cat, we're using a bear instead. And I think it's a really cool opportunity to sprinkle in some really pretty reds of the poppies, but make it look like feathers in a way. Like here on the back tail feather, we could put some really cool poppy reds, maybe down along the back. I think that would look really cool and it would pop and look really, really interesting. I was really also digging three because it kind of has like an owl bear feeling to me, which I really like and I think it looks cool. But I think in the end, we're going to go with one just because it looks really strong. And I think this is my favorite design of it. And it kind of incorporates everything pretty evenly, at least in my opinion. Like we can get some of the cool neck ruffles here from the Capricaly along with like the red above its eye. We get the bare aspects from like the legs, the face structure and the ears. And then we can sprinkle in more of the falcon like in these front legs and on the wings. I think there's just a lot to work with with this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and do a final sketch for this, kind of figure out how I want to pose it so we can show off a lot of its cool aspects. And then uh, we'll do line art and color and we'll be done. So I'll see you guys in a second. So I was really excited to start off this creature design. Um, I do really like griffin designs. I think they're probably another one of my favorite mythical creatures. Um, I had an idea of kind of converting some different, uh, you know, exotic birds and uh, maybe some different big cats or different creatures together to make a bunch of different griffins. Um, I don't know why I never really pursued that. I had, I had the idea for a long time, but I never really did it. And I'm glad that I was able to explore it a little bit with this creation because honestly, I never, I don't know. I don't think I've seen like a bear griffin in it, I mean, they probably are out there. The likelihood of an artist making a griffin with a bear is highly likely, but um, at least I haven't really seen them as commonly. I think the one that I see a lot that's kind of like the exotic interpretation of griffins is like adding a snow leopard as the main base. Um, I've seen that quite a few times. And then I've also seen griffins with like toucans and flamingos and lots of different and weird birds. So it was just fun to be able to go through and like try this out and experiment with it. I also uh, really liked kind of delving in and trying to make this one really detailed. Um, I've been kind of going between, you know, making quicker, faster art so I can keep up with like the YouTube uploads. Um, but it's also nice to just delve in and really get stuck into a lot of little details with this. Because like I said in previous videos, I'm trying to go all out and, you know, start doing uh, content that takes me longer to draw, but I'm hoping will help me improve a lot more. Uh, I'd like to start doing more backgrounds and adding some more details and then probably exploring more ways I can paint like the creatures better. Uh, one example is, oh God, I think it's been like two, three years. I did a Nargakuga painting. It's a really old video. Um, but I still feel that's one of my strongest painting practices because I was right after I took a Skillshare class for like online rendering and painting. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try to paint this whole thing, this larger, bigger creature. And I still feel that's one of my stronger uh, creature paintings just because of the texturing and the detailing and everything. But now that I've done this one, I'm actually super pleased with how this one came out. I'd like to give a pretty big shout out to my Twitch community first and foremost because they gave me this amazing idea of the Black Forest creature. I've never really known about the Black Forest in Germany. There are so many different exotic places that I've never heard of or never seen, maybe because they're not as popular in some of the media I ingest, but like this was really cool to find out about this place and see some of the creatures and things that live there. Um, but then also they've been giving me a lot of really great suggestions on how to improve overall, which has been really, really helpful because, you know, after you look at a piece for so many hours, it can sometimes be a little tough to see like where you can push it more, I guess you could say. Just cause you get so used to 
seeing this piece over and over and over that it's really hard to see like the flaws or things you could change just because you've been staring at it so long. So it's been really refreshing and nice to get like another pair of eyes on it. Well, at least quite a few pairs of eyes and being like basically them giving me some really good feedback. So I really appreciate all of you guys have been tuning in to my Twitch streams and giving me some feedback on how I can improve my paintings. And I know that a lot of you have also been leaving comments here on YouTube on how to improve and just make everything like go a little bit smoother for me with drawing. Um, and I know there's been a lot of you here on YouTube who have been sending me comments on how to like improve or like books to look up. So I really appreciate all of you guys sending me so many suggestions because I really want to improve my creature like paintings. I do like where I'm at, um, but I know there's room to grow. Like I've been following a lot of amazing Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gather Gathering. I can't talk today. Magic the Gathering artists on Twitter and their rendering skills just blow my mind. You know, uh, I just really like how a lot of their realism paintings look. I don't know if I want to get into full realism, but I think I can at least improve my texturing and like color and composition and for sure my backgrounds. Cause like I've said, I've been really wanting to get into doing my comic. So I'm very excited to jump in and do those. But enough about technique and I guess the creation of this creature. Let's talk more about the actual creature itself and some interesting things about it. So first off, like I said, this was a really fun griffin to draw. I really enjoyed having this combo of the bear and these different birds. And then the poppies were just a nice fun hit of red. I know I didn't really lean on them as much as maybe some previous food chain mashes where I really integrate the plants into it. The one I can think of is like the, I think it was the African Plains and then the Tundra one that I did. Both of those, it was a little bit easier to kind of place the actual plants on the creature and like really integrate it. But this one, I just thought it would be really nice to have those hits of red all over the creature and just really make it pop in that way instead of literally putting just flowers all over it. I think this was a nice integration of the flowers without just looking like I pasted flowers all over the creature at the same time. And then it just worked out really well because I already forgot the name of the bird, but the one with the green chest, it just worked out so well. Like that pop of the green against the, the browns and then you get the hit of the reds. Really loved overall the color combination that these creatures were able to bring to this overall creation. It was, oh, it was so much fun. And then when we started getting into more of the background painting, um, which I'll be hitting on here in a minute. Uh, that was interesting because I had to, I, I wanted to put it in the place where we got the food chain from. So I was like, we should look up pictures of the black forest and kind of find one that is a little bit moody. Like imagine you're walking through the forest and you're like on a hike through the, the black forest and you just stumble across this amazing creature, just like kind of looking it back at you mysteriously kind of beckoning you forward with it in a way that's kind of what I'm getting from the vibe of this one. Um, and I really wanted to add like all these cool like mossy rocks and maybe a little bit of a stream and add a bunch of trees and some really moody lighting. Um, one thing that I think I might add in a future one because I know I didn't add it here was I'd love to add the light particles. You know, like when you're kind of walking through someplace and there's a light beam that hits the particles in the air just right and just kind of has them like floating around in your vision. I think that would have added even more to this piece. And now looking back, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna add that to a future piece that has some really good moody lighting. So I'm excited to add that in a future background painting. But I do like how this one turned out overall. It was pretty challenging because I know one of the things I suffer from a lot is when I get started with something, especially like backgrounds, it's hard for me to see the final result in my mind and make sure that it like, you know, looks good, I guess. I, the main thing is I can get kind of not frustrated, but I get a little frazzled pretty early on when something isn't working, but then I just have to keep working at it, keep adding details and it slowly comes together. Basically, I know I just already went on a tandem, tangent, not tandem, 
I can really talk today. <laughs> I already went on a tangent about it, but I think one of the things that I struggle the most with backgrounds is just like not being able to really see it until it gets towards the end of it. Um, so I get kind of frustrated if I can't really see the end result. Like with the creatures, I like get the sketch down, I get the line art and I already can feel where the creature is going and where the final image will be, you know, like, I already have a really good idea of what it's looking like, but with backgrounds, at least when I try this painterly way, um, you have to like slowly layer it and build it over time. So I have the image in my brain and I have my reference there in the corner, but it just, it's hard, you know, cause you're just like trying to picture and imagine it as you're building it. Um, and it's hard to just like see it and know what to do with it, I guess. It's just like starting with a blank canvas and having the image in your mind and then just going for it. I've been trying to go back and forth on how I want to do backgrounds because I, I like the painterly look and I like how this one turned out, but I also love certain comic artists that go through and do like the line art of different things in the background. So maybe sometime coming up soon, I'll just do kind of like a, a background course for myself, you know, like just go through and do a couple of different practices of different styles and just kind of feel out what I want. You know, when I actually start making my comic and start producing, I kind of want to have the vision in mind of how I want the backgrounds to be. And, you know, it will evolve over time. You know, styles are going to change. And after making a comic for a while, things will evolve and change over time. But I at least want to kind of have an idea of what I want it to look like overall. So you might see a couple of different experiments in upcoming videos. Uh, like this one was a pretty big undertaking for me. I do really like how the background turned out overall. And it was, it was good for a learning experience and learning how to slowly add more and more to the piece and just build this over time. But I absolutely adore how the creature turned out. This was such a fun prompt to do. And I do really enjoy these monster mashes. I know I get quite a few comments from people being like, when's the next monster mash? Um, and I like them and they're probably one of my favorite videos to produce, but I like doing a little bit of variety on the channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you have any other ideas for monster mashes or other food chains I should look into, I'd love to hear what you are thinking down in the comments below. And I'd love to see what you guys think of for other monster mashes in the future. And if you want to do this monster mash and recreate it yourself, post it on Instagram and Twitter and tag me. I'd love to see your interpretation of this combo of creatures. Okay guys, we are all done with this painting and I'm pretty proud of this one. I like the monster mash itself. I think the creature turned out really awesome, but I'm glad that I'm pushing myself more to do more backgrounds. These end up taking a lot longer now that I'm adding like backgrounds and extra detailing, but I think it's going to be worth it in the long run. It's going to really help with just making me practice things I'm uncomfortable with. It's just nice to feel a little bit better about painting backgrounds, but I know I still have some ways to improve, you know, to make the backgrounds look like how I want them to look like. So I'm probably going to start taking some skill shares or something to improve, but I think this was a great step in the right direction on getting better on backgrounds. And then I also wanted to thank my Twitch chat. They gave me a bunch of great recommendations on how to make this thing look better and like have it look really good with the background and gave me more advice on the background in general. And I think them helping me out and just me like diving in and trying it really helped this, you know, look a lot better than I thought it would. But either way, thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, join our little nerdy art community of monster and dragon lovers. And uh, if you have any recommendations on like background books that I could check out or like different ways I can improve my background paintings, I know there's quite a few talented artists in the community. So please leave it down in the comments below. But either way, thank you guys again so much for stopping by and I'll see you all next time. Bye everybody. I'd like to thank all my patrons over on Patreon. Your guys' support is amazing. And if any of you would like to get some behind the scenes sketches, uh, some early access to art that will be on this channel, uh, a monster of the month and so many other goodies, make sure to go check out my Patreon. And again, thank you guys so much for stopping by and I'll see you all next time.